I, I wanted to speak very briefly today on, on this legislation and, and begin by commending Senator Higgins for it. I, I believe it is really, really positive, really good, uh, and I think re reflective is a very, very good word for it. Um, I, I think it shows your tremendous passion, your insight, and, and it stands as a challenge to government uh, that we would benefit to listen from and, and listen to and take on board. Um, the most economically advantageous tender uh, and cost, while it is a very attractive and obvious metric uh, to use in determining the outcome of any tender process, it doesn't always take cognizance of all of the elements that are needed to, and issues that are needed to be considered. Uh, so while I appreciate the government's concerns, and naturally uh, I don't want a situation whereby supply chains are become laboriously bureaucratic, um, we do need to consider that the, the metrics that are used in determining um, and considering any tender process and to make sure that they are fit for purpose and that they 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 uh, test what they should test and they they check so all projects projects should have a, an assessment uh, to establish whether the criteria that assesses the outcome of that tender process uh, really is uh, suited to ensuring that the beneficiaries, the intended beneficiaries of that process, get the maximum out of it. Yeah, in recent years, we've seen uh, the tendering of the work of partnerships ar around the state, uh, uh, resulting in the consolidation of services, uh, the consolidation of more managed services with a client and community focus, uh, and that's lent itself to innovations in services uh, in, in a very positive way. In, in some instances, I've seen the creation of new services out of the people that didn't get the tender uh, and, and to move to, to be able to be freed up and to do other, other areas of work. Um, we've seen the recruitment industry brought into the provision of job seeker supports, um, which I think is another positive development, uh, which is gained through the greater use of the tendering process of the state. Uh, the the e-tender system in advertising tenders has been a very effective and efficient one. I know that from my own business in the past. I still receive the email every morning and have a glance through it and have have done so for years. Um, but as do many, many small companies. Uh, however, not all small companies are able to tender for the work. Many companies have to retain the services of a person um, to especially write tenders because they're so complex and there's so much required in them. Uh, so from my experience, the tendering process uh, requires an assessment of competence and capability of the applicant and that that's taken into account in the experience of similar work uh, and they must reference other completed projects uh, as well. So for companies starting off getting into the system that can be a, a difficult thing to do and quite an ordeal to over. So I wonder how much innovation and, and positivity we lose from that process. Uh, so I would, um, in, the, in the hesitation of, of of companies in, uh, in, in finding it onerous. So I, I think we, we need to ensure that the process of tendering for work uh, takes cognizance of that and allows small and big. So I would be, be anxious to see that bureaucracy uh, removed. Uh, I noted in the, in the lead up to the preparation for today, the, the guidelines that were, were published by uh, Mr. then Minister Pascal Donoghue um, and uh, well, so it's a whole, 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 uh, whole committee here, but also Minister Patrick O'Donovan uh, back in 2019, which were the, uh, the public procurement guidelines for goods and services. And in that, when we look at the index of that, it goes into everything, uh, you know, across a whole, the, the necessity for environmental concerns, the necessity to look at the, at the labour uh, market and to ensure that the, the um, employment uh, standards are. And I note in that, in, in employment law, we do have a transfer of undertakings, which is a protection for, to ensure that the terms and conditions of employees don't become reduced at the, at the, when tendering uh, comes into play. Um, so I, I, uh, I, I just note that as being ensuring and have been involved in the due diligence process in that regard where, st where staff transfer when tenders are won by different parties. Um, so I think that we have inbuilt standards already in industry, industry standards, EU uh, standards and ISO standards 
standards. So the, the, those public procurement guidelines are, are very helpful and they set out to actively engage SMEs in the process and elaborate on those minimum standards. Um, so, and it also ha deals with abnor abnormally low tenders. It deal so it gives guidance on all of those areas and ensuring that there are audit trails um, and also allowing for uh, the competing parties to be excluded and sets out the grounds at which people can be excluded. So I think that we have we, we have systems in place. There are enhanced systems here within, within this piece of legislation that I very much recommend. So I think that taking time to ensure we come out with the best possible process of this is, is really to, to, uh, to be commended and, and is right and I support that. Uh, so I, I really welcome your, your bill. Uh, I welcome that it ignites the conversation to review and consider our procurement process uh, and that we agree uh, we I but I also agree that we need a time for pause to make sure we have the best as my my colleague has said that we have the best outcome thank you